Today in Apple Motion, we're gonna create this progress bar that was inspired by Mobox Graphics in his After Effects tutorial. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this project and use it in your videos right now. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we are going to select the Final Cut title, and then over on the right-hand side, you can leave your presets and frame rate at whatever you typically like to edit with. From there, we'll go ahead and push Open. The first thing we'll wanna do is delete the title background and type text here layers. After that, we'll come down next to this rectangle and click on this down arrow to get the line tool. Click and drag holding shift to get a perfectly straight line. Go ahead and make it however long you want this progress bar to be. After that, we'll go to the inspector. We'll go to our properties and find the position parameter. Go ahead and click on this down arrow and reset the parameter so that your line is directly in the center. After that, we'll go to the shape settings and we can change stuff like the color, the width, and pretty much anything else you might like. Now, I want the edges to be a hard edge, so I'm gonna change the start cap over to none and the end cap over to none. Now that we have our first line set up, we want it to have a little bit of a background, so I'm gonna select that line and then push Command D to duplicate it. Then I'm gonna push Command left bracket to drop it down in the layer stack. Now we can go ahead and change the color on this secondary line. I happen to like how dark gray looks, so I'll go ahead and do just that. This is just gonna serve as a background to the original line. Let's go ahead and rename it to be background line. Then let's also rename this group to be progress bar. After that, we can go ahead and collapse the progress bar for right now. Right click and create a new group. In here, we'll just call this the indicator group. Then we can go down to where our line is, click on this down arrow and get the rectangle tool. Go ahead and create a rectangle, roughly the shape and size that you want. Then go ahead and disable the outline on that. We'll jump into the geometry settings and drag up the roundness slider so we have some nice curved edges. After that, we can go over to the library and locate our shapes. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see this triangle shape. Go ahead and add that into the indicator group. Then we can rotate it around holding shift to lock it to its axis and then we'll shrink it down so it's the right scale and size for what we want. We can also select the triangle in our timeline, go to the end and push O so that it lasts for the entire duration of our project. Since we're already in our library, go ahead and select your generators. In your generators, scroll down until you find the numbers generator and then drag that into your indicator group. From there, we can go to the inspector and adjust the appearance to our liking. I'll go ahead and just change it to be a black color. Then we can drag this up over the top of our indicator box. After that, I'm gonna go into the format settings and change it to be centered in its alignment and then drag up the scale quite a bit. And then we can just recenter that on the box to our liking. Now, if you want this to have a percentage symbol, we can go over to the generator settings and change the format from number over to percent. However, I really like the clean minimalist look, so I'm just gonna change this over to number. We can go ahead and disable this checkbox for animate. We're gonna drive that with a slider. And you can see I can actually use this slider here on value to change the number. Now that we have our indicator box set up, we need to go ahead and adjust the anchor point because right now the anchor point for this box is down here off to the side and that's gonna throw off our animation. So to change that, go ahead and click on this down arrow next to the arrow tool and change it to the anchor point tool. We can go ahead and just use these on-screen controls to adjust this anchor point to get it down to the point of our indicator box. Now that that's in position, we can go ahead and select the indicator, go up to behaviors, go to basic motion and select motion path. Now we need to change the path shape from open spline over to geometry. What this will enable us to do is to use the line that we created earlier as the path shape. So we can go ahead and expand the progress bar so that we see the original line we created and drag that into the shape source box. So now you'll see that if I adjust this offset, our indicator is moving along this line. Now, I definitely don't want it to be directly on the line. I want it to be offset just a little bit. So let's go ahead and disable this box for attached to shape. Now that that's unchecked, go ahead and make sure that your playhead is at the very beginning of your project so that it's at the earliest point on our geometry line. After that, we can go ahead and click and drag this indicator to be directly over the top 
of our progress bar. Now that it's in position, you'll notice that if I play through the timeline, it's automatically animated, and we wanna be able to adjust this to our liking. So to do that, let's go ahead and change the speed from constant over to custom. After that, I'm gonna click on this down arrow next to custom speed and reset it. So now I can actually use the slider on this custom bar to adjust the position of our indicator. From there, we wanna link wherever the position of this custom bar is to the position of our line. So we'll go ahead and click on this down arrow next to custom speed, add parameter behavior and select link. From there, we can go ahead and drag in the original progress bar that we created. We'll need to change the compatible parameters from none over to object, shape, outline, last point offset. And now you'll notice that if I go over to this line and adjust this last point offset, our indicator is working along with that line. But you'll also notice that the numbers in our indicator are not going up. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Jumping into the numbers generator, we'll need to locate our value, click on the down arrow, add a parameter behavior, we'll link it over to the line, then we can go to compatible parameters, object, shape, outline, then last point offset. And now you'll notice that the number is adjusting to wherever our last point offset is. So if I drag it to zero, it'll go down to zero or up to 100. So we now have this indicator all set up, but we wanna go ahead and add a few more animations to really make it pop. So let's find our indicator box. We'll go to our properties and locate the scale value. We can click on this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and then select ramp. The ramp is a really nice smooth animation that you can apply without needing to add any keyframes. We'll go back to the very beginning of our project and we'll change the start value from 0% down to negative 100%. This is going to negate the 100% value that the indicator is originally set at. So if I go to the end, you'll see that it's at 100%. So it's going to negate that value value. Let's go into our ramp parameter and we can go ahead and move forward just a few frames. Maybe I'll go forward about 20 frames and push O. This is going to trim down the ramp value so that it's only 20 frames long. After that, we can find this curvature slider and drag that up so that there is some nice easing to this animation. So if we push play, it should pop into place just like so. One last thing we want to do is make sure that this animation works really well in Final Cut Pro. So we'll go to the very end of that animation and push Shift M. That will add this marker. Go ahead and double click on that marker and change the type from standard to build in optional. Then we'll push OK. That will enable the user to indicate if they want that beginning animation or not. So there's one last thing I wanna add to this slider to make it so we have full functionality over it in Final Cut Pro. Right now, if we publish this to Final Cut Pro, we wouldn't be able to ease the animations. They would look very jagged and jarring. Go ahead and select this line, go to the shape settings and locate your last point offset. This is gonna seem a little bit redundant, but this is the only way that I know of to add easing capabilities in Final Cut Pro. We'll click on this down arrow next to last point offset. We'll add it to a rig. We'll create a new rig and then select slider. From there, we'll go to the first point of the slider and set that to 0% and we should be good to go. Now what we need to do is double click on our slider and just rename it to be something like progress and we can go ahead and click on this down arrow and publish it. From there, we can jump into our line settings and right click on the brush color and publish that. Then we could also do the same thing with the background color, just like so. So now that we have all of the values published that we wanna use, we can go ahead and push Command S. This will allow us to save it or to publish it to Final Cut. We can call it progress bar. Then we can throw it into whatever category we like. I'll go ahead and throw it into tutorials and push publish. Now, if we jump inside of Final Cut Pro, we should have access to all of these tools that we just published. Inside of Final Cut Pro, I'll go up to my titles and locate the category that I just published this to, which is tutorials. We can go ahead and scroll down and find the progress bar. Then I will drag that onto my timeline. So if I push play, I should have this nice little pop-in animation of our 100%. But what we can do is find the progress bar and drag that down to zero. So I'll set it to zero. We'll click to add a keyframe move forward till we want the animation to end and drag that to the end. However, you'll notice that if I push play, the animation is not very smooth. I want it to have that nice easing animation. So to achieve that, go ahead and right click on your progress bar and select show video animation. In here, you'll see this progress bar at the top. Click on the down arrow and change it over to the progress indicator. You'll notice that that adds this additional icon here on the right side. Click on that and you'll see that we now have this graph of our animation. 
Right now it's a nice linear animation. Let's go ahead and right click on that and change it over to ease. So if we push play, we should have a nice eased animation to our progress bar. Don't forget if you're a patron, you can download this project and use it in your videos right now. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.